So welcome to the show, everyone. Today's guest is Masami Sato, who is the founder and CEO of B1G1, a social enterprise and B Corp based in Singapore. Now, you might remember B1G1, also known as Buy One, Give One, as one of our partners from last year's Become a Force for Good event, and also the keynote that Paul Dunn, one of the co-founders, who delivered at that event. Now, B1G1 helps businesses around the world integrate effective giving into what they do. And today, B1G1 works with more than 3,000 businesses, and these businesses have created over 270 million giving impacts to date. Um, and Masami has the diverse business background, is a two-time TEDx speaker and author of four books. She's also a mother of two teenagers, and her work originates in the belief that businesses with a real sense of purpose can make a real difference in the world. So welcome to the show, Masami. It's great to have you here. Ah, thank you. Great to be here. And thank you for the intro. There was You're just welcome. one thing that yes. is slightly outdated that actually my older daughter became 21. So she oh, wow. is no okay. longer a teenager. <laughs> a teenager. <laughs> so I have a teenage, one teenager. One teenager, one adult. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Listen, Masami, we're so excited to obviously be talking to you today. You are clearly a power woman on a mission um, and uh, we're just in awe of the work that you guys do over at B1G1. So before we kind of dive in to some of like the practicality of what you do, I would love for you to perhaps share a little bit more about your personal background and what led you to be now doing what you're doing. Mm. Well, like, uh, I'm not sure how far back I should go. <laughs> I should go. Um, but from my name, people um, in the audience might notice that I'm maybe Asian and Japanese. Some people recognize my name, Sato, because Sato is one of the most common names, like yeah. family names in Japan. <laughs> so yes. I'm from Japan and I grew up in Japan. But uh, when I you know, finished studying and I was very curious about what was happening in the world, I decided to travel or go overseas. So I studied um, for the first time you know, properly the English, which is the language like which we can communicate with lots of people with. So um, the initial few years of traveling around the world as a, this vulnerable backpacker you know who couldn't even speak English that well and didn't have a lot of money didn't know anybody outside that time was like really uh, important in you know, a significant time of my life um, but through that time what I realized was that uh, um, all the things that I thought was quite pretty normal in my own um, country like going all the kids could go to school or I have food at least, even if I came from relatively like a poor family background in Japan, like, you know, lower end of uh, middle class family, and my parents struggled, but we could eat. So for me, like seeing people living on the street or kids not being able to go to school um, and to complete even primary school education was like, something that was unbelievable, but at the same time, I didn't know why those things were happening or, um, why nothing was done to change the reality. And um, so I contemplated on that for some time. And then eventually at one point of the time, I thought that maybe like businesses and consumerism was contributing toward this kind of like a disparity or environmental challenges. So um, even like at one point of the time, I thought that I wanted to create a self-sufficient life and not to buy anything. <laughs> and then I moved to a countryside in Japan and tried to create a self-sufficient life. Like, you know, but um, over the time I was like trying and exploring and trying to prove something or trying to find the real reason behind the certain things that were creating challenges for people around the world, I realized that actually there was no single right answer. And then I also realized that actually people around the world all had something in common, which is this like a real human spirit of people like wanting to do good for others like around them their own loved ones or friends or people in the community when people had that empathy then the bond and then the trust that we could create in relationship was very strong and i thought wow like people are very generous because even the people who didn't have a lot of um, things or food when i was traveling and backpacking there were so many people who offered me to share their food or you know invited me to stay with them or so, um, so that's kind of my personal background before leading to uh, business, uh, you know, development area. <laughs> 
I love that so much. I mean, I think it's too easy, isn't it, for us to just get stuck in our in our own model of the world, the way we've been raised. And I think it's so beautiful how you've been able to see what what is the commonality between everybody that you've met when you've been traveling it is that compassion that empathy that that desire to to be kind to others and contribute in any way that we can and I think that really really is highlighted in obviously what you do today as well and I think one of the reasons we were drawn to partner with you with through our giving through wellness theory was for that very reason and and it does it just gives this extra sense of purpose behind what it is we do as well because one of the things that we've found in all of our time in kind of just the the wellness space and just in life as well is one of the main things that holds people back is stress right their own personal stress and that's what I mean like when we get stuck into our own model of the world it's very easy to just think about ourselves in our immediate um like environment and the people that are closest to us and actually like you've said we do all have this like innate desire to to give right and to to have that ripple effect I I believe I choose to believe that (laughs) um and I think it's just so important that when we can perhaps start to deal with that stress we can then start to look at that bigger picture so before again we dive into the business side of it I would love for you to share like from a stress standpoint obviously the name of our podcast is stress relief in your pocket with everything that you've been through and the the, I would imagine what you saw when you were back backpacking created some kind of stress within you to then obviously go on this mission that you're on but also day to day with being such a power woman like how do you deal with stress Mm. So um, I think the most effective way to deal with the stress and deal it uh, relatively quickly <laughs> is to actually let go. And <laughs> yeah. so one one typical example along my journey, because I, I could be stressed, I could be like uh, tied up with a little detail thinking or, you know, like uh, uh, worry about something too. But when some significant stressful situation occurred in my life, when I actually didn't have anything else to like deal with that stress. So for example, one example is when I was in, one day in Costa Rica and as a backpacker, I um, traveled from Guatemala to Costa Rica with just a few dollars of cash in my pocket. And I was thinking like, oh, I had this card which we I can use to withdraw some money from ATM machine when I get to the country so I can get the local currency, right? So I didn't have anything, just a small backpack to go there for a couple of weeks to explore Costa Rica. And I had my host family, host, you know, homestay family in Guatemala, which uh, I could go back to afterward. So just two weeks. But when on the day I arrived, and I went to uh, you know ATM machine and tried to get the money. The, nothing came out, and the, the, just a slip paper, you know, piece of paper saying like, "Oh, you are like you have a problem." So I thought, "Oh my gosh, I only have a few dollars, right?" And back then, like 25, 26 years ago, um, staying in one uh, cheap accommodation <laughs> was probably like a two dollars a night. So I thought, "Okay, I just have enough money to kind of keep me until like Monday." when the bank is open. So I go back to the bank, I haven't eaten. Uh, Then I went to the teller and then explained the situation. And all they said was, sorry, there's nothing we could do. Your card wouldn't work here. So no money, (laughs) no friend. Uh, My Spanish was kind of beginner's level. I was studying Spanish at that time. And I had to survive for two weeks and a bit, right? and, And so, that could be like a stre- relatively stressful situation, right? I would say, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and, and making a phone call to somebody outside the country, I didn't even have enough money for that. <laughs> so, so I thought, what would I do? And then um, when you meet that kind of a situation where there's nothing else you could do, only thing you could do is to let go. So I did. <laughs> then mm-hmm. I kind of calmed down and I thought, oh, what would I do? And then I thought, okay, in any country, there may be people who I could help. And then they might let me stay with them. So then I thought about this city, San Jose, was so busy. You know, everybody seemed to be so busy, not so safe place. <laughs> so I thought I would go to a countryside. Then I went to a bus terminal, looked around the signboard, and I go like, oh, where, where can I go? And I found this like a, a town or a village, or I don't know, a name that mm-hmm. sounded nice. So I went to the counter and bought, tried to buy a ticket. And I said, how much is it? And then the 
price of the bus ticket was almost exactly the same as the money, like the coins money I had in my pocket. So I thought, oh my gosh, this is like almost like a calling. <laughs> so I hopped on the bus. I didn't know where I was going. And six hours later, I arrived in this little village with no street light in the middle of the night. Oh wow. <laughs> so then I am far away from even the city, right? Like and then I, it's dark. <laughs> then I started to knock on the little doors of small houses mm -hmm. along the way. And then people come out and I explain with my limited Spanish why I didn't have money, but I could do any work for them if they could let me stay. Then people go like, oh, so sorry, we are so poor. Why don't you go to this person's house? So I get handed around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Finally, I reach this little Chinese food uh, store, um, restaurant. And then the lady took me and gave me fried rice, which was the most beautiful fried rice <laughs> I ever ate <laughs> in my life. And uh, I was just, you know, explaining the situation. And then what happened was when I was eating the food, then uh, a big um, truck comes, come, pulls, up, pulls up. And it was Red Cross coming for rescue for this <laughs> Japanese girl who got lost <laughs> with no money. And anyway, like, so th this is actually goes on. But anyway, what it says was this, like, that sometimes we, you just, you know, it, 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 something happened and you have nothing else uh, to to do with the situation in a typical way. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that trip for me was one of the most profoundly, like, interesting and fulfilling mm -hmm. time. And <laughs> that taught me so much. I don't think I'm here today if mm. I didn't have experiences like that where people came to help me mm. <laughs> and people who had seemingly so little was there to help this vulnerable foreigner <laughs> who got lost and <laughs> so I feel um, we could get stressed and then quite often the stress comes from worries about the future or guilty feeling or sadness or pain from the past. But the past and the future, neither of them actually exist today. Only thing that we can be in control of is what we actually do right now. And that part, if we just remove the worried part <laughs> and the stress part, then we will still take action and we will still end up with a certain outcome. Um, and that would just come anyway. So, yeah. So that's yeah. kind of like, sometimes we just need to let go. <laughs> oh, it's, <laughs> what a fantastic funny. story. Oh, like, I know. It, the, the, just the theme as well. It's funny that the letting go theme seems to be kind of a, a constant theme across everyone we've been speaking to recently. <laughs> and mm. it's just so, I think it's so powerful because if you, in that situation, you could have gone a completely different route of just adding on your stress screaming about it panicking about it worrying about it and you might have eventually got some help but you would have done a lot of suffering in the process um but the fact that you just let go that automatically puts you in such a more resourceful state to see opportunities that come up and that leads you to taking that bus and go obviously finding finding that person who takes you in obviously and helps helps you um, so I think it's so powerful just to understand that letting go, which is not particularly always easy when you're in that moment of stress, can be a godsend, can be that blessing in disguise to help you find the answer that you're looking for. I think. Mm, mm. The, the mm. thing about your story as well is to, to really highlight is something actually really good, probably many things come out of that experience, right? From what would be deemed as stressful, perhaps to anybody yeah. listening, if they was imagining themselves going through that, it's that actually it's led you to where you are today. So mm. you obviously got to experience all of that goodness and, and, and being in receipt of that. And you're clearly now giving back millions of times over um, and paying forward your experience there as well, which um, is obviously as a result of, of everything you've, you've been through. So tell us a little bit more about B1G1 for our mm. listeners that perhaps didn't quite catch the, the keynote and what B1G1 is all about. Mm, okay. So I think like for somebody who had that 
you know, background of backpacking mm. or uh, at one point of time, judging consumerism and the businesses to be today running an organization, which is about working with all kinds of businesses, you know, like bringing them together to achieve good things together is probably like a unusual direction. Um, but the, I want to share a little bit about how we got there. Because mm. when I had, I saw those challenges in the world and I didn't know what I could do. Um, of course, it was overwhelming because I thought that it was not right that the young children had to work, you know, and can't even mm. get the education and continue to be in the poverty like cycle yeah. uh, generation after generation. But then, well, even when I thought so, I, I thought I was too small to make a difference and do anything about it. So I kind of like let go of that too, and then moved on with my life, right? But when I gave birth to my daughter for the first first time, my child, um, I, that like saying like, oh, I'm too small, so I can't do anything, wasn't acceptable anymore. Because mm -hmm. I thought that if my child happened to be born in the same circumstance and there was no help. And then everyone in the world all said, oh, we are too small, so we can't do anything, sorry. Yeah. Then it's not acceptable. <laughs> like, so I thought, well, okay, I can't change the world and I can't change things for everyone, but maybe I can do a little bit more than taking care of my own child. And that's when I decided to start a business and um, so that kind of took me like being do learning a business was to me one way to express self right like and then to create the value solve problems and um, at the same time I thought that we could give all the profits away as the business develop and then to contribute to um, making things better for um, some other children so we had an uh, idea that one day we would build a soup kitchen and where we can have children coming and educate, help educate them. And so that kind of things, right? And, and mm -hmm. I went on, we went on with that idea. But what happened was five years later, when we were running uh, business, this business, which became more developed, then we had more customers and we were wholesaling our packaged frozen meals to more than 150 stores in Australia in multiple states. So at that time, right, like I was still too busy and I was still not doing anything because all the money we were making, um, we had to put it back into business so that we could build a new freezer room or <laughs> better packaging. <laughs> so then I thought, you know, if we try to do something big one day in the future, we might never do it because it, maybe like five years time, 10 years time, we will be still telling ourselves the same story that we are not ready yet. We need to become more successful, bigger and <laughs> all that kind of things. So that transformed the perspective of making a difference and then I thought, what if instead of trying to do something big in the future, we did something small, but from today. Mm -hmm. And that's when the concept of b one g one was born. And that's why initially it was called by one idea was called by one give one because every time we sold a meal, you know, packaged meal, we would give a meal, right? And then we we can allocate a small portion of the proceed to enable that action through experienced NGO. And then at that time I realized, well, in India, which I traveled as well, we could give a meal for 25, something like 25 cents. And we could do that from then, right? Because it's small um, compared to building a soup kitchen or creating a foundation. So that then led to like several months later, another idea, well, same idea, but another level, which was um, that instead of doing this alone with our own business, which is great too, yeah. but we thought what if we could work with many other businesses that want to make a difference in their own unique ways. And not everybody is into food. <laughs> like yeah. some people are more into education, environment, animals, you know, yeah. marine life. So what if we could all come together and we made it so simple that any business can say every time we do something good mm. happens through our business, we want to create something great in the world mm. as well. 
And so that was 2007. And eventually, um, we sold our company in Australia and moved to Singapore and then set up b one one as the global initiative. Um, and since then, uh, gradually, each and every year, more and more companies joined us. <laughs> and then today, uh, um, we, well, not today, but the, just a few days ago, we reached our another um, important milestone of um, 300 million giving impact, you know, collective giving impact. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Incredible. Incredible work. I, what, there's so much love about what you just said. <laughs> um, but I really want to highlight the narrative that you had going um, around, I'm just me what can one small person do to to essentially affect change and that that's the same narrative that i personally went through is a similar narrative to what our clients come to us with at times as well and it's it's beautiful to be able to see you leading the way there and and showing that actually let's just start with where we are rather than trying to change change the world yes we i think our listeners are very familiar here and say that we need to change ourselves internally to be able to have that capacity then for more for more but the the reality is is if if we are so focused on one day when i achieve this then i can do that mentality it just doesn't end up really serving anybody uh, or as many people as what it could do if we all just started today in any which way we can. can we? Absolutely. And I, we we came across obviously B1G1 through our own clients' questions of when, the, when they started doing that inner work and started getting rid of their own unhealthy stress and started to become, kind of find that alignment in their life, is they started asking that question is like, how can they give back? How can they serve? What can they do? Like they don't know where to start. And we were thinking, okay, yeah, that's a good point, actually. Like where where does someone start because there's so much out there and everyone wants to help everyone um, everything is like okay where, where's the great starting point and that's when we actually came across b1g1 and thinking mm. oh my god this is this is like so perfect because it doesn't matter how small or how big you start in terms of how much you want to give or the impact you want to have every impact creates something powerful and we have people that go oh but i don't have i don't i don't have a lot of money i don't have a lot of disposable income and it doesn't matter like through be what like through through you guys through some of the causes that you support mm -hmm. you can provide like a whole year of clean water to to people in need for for next to nothing and it creates such a big impact and i, th I think that's what people don't realize is you don't need to be a millionaire you don't need to be a richard branson or a tony robbins to make to 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 make a difference in the world to really give back and support and that's that's where i think b1g1 has such a powerful kind of foothold in um in in this field in this market because anyone no matter how small they start from or where they start from they can create such a powerful impact and like with we what we do is we set ourselves up so if anyone opens our emails, responds to our emails, watches a video, works with us. Every single action that someone takes with our business creates an impact through through B1G1. So we give, like we do tell people, is like you watch one of our videos, we donate on your behalf towards causes that support the 2030 Global Goals. And I think people love that aspect of it because it turns something that is boring, like emails and tracking data, to something that makes a difference, that actually gives back and um, creates those those good positive impacts in the world so what i'd love to kind of ask you is that you've got obviously like thousands of businesses under under b1g1 now who are working with b1g1 what is kind of the goal for b1g1 in terms of like, like the five the 10 the, the 15 year goal and if every business adopted that mentality in their business of giving back and not uh, what he not even just working with b1g1 but i mean having that impact whereas they turn the mundane parts of their business into something that inspires and gives back what sort of difference do you think that will have in the world mm. i think businesses actually have the power to transform any challenges that we face and mm. that's how businesses were supposed to be in mm. our communities and businesses, structures of, you know, businesses were born because it allows every human being in the world to find the value exchange. 
and the value exchange was supposed to be solving each other's problems and you know creating more enjoyment and uh, you know comfort and convenience and then then we developed that but only reason why we are facing this sustainability issue today is because the primary focus of business became really only about the profit maximization over the years and when we actually focus on that and then utilize our power and our technology and our smart in maximizing the profit, we can do so much with that. But then at the same time, because that power is um, held in the hands of a small number of people, we actually naturally created decisions that influenced the lives of millions and billions of people around the world to be compromised at the bottom of the pyramid. And they don't have the power to make decisions in that structure because they just want to give them the, even the fair opportunity to make a living mm -hmm. and to be educated. So in order for us to transform this, we need to bring back this almost like a democracy of business, which is that every customer has the vote to vote for the businesses that they admire and respect and love and to treasure. And then by doing so, and then also people actually make vote for working for companies. Like when people choose to work for a company, then we are actually casting a vote to say, this company is a good company. That's why I will work for them. So now these things are starting to happen. Like consumerism is starting to change that no longer, you know, people are only buying things just to get the cheapest price. But more and more people are starting to purchase product and be okay to have less items, but you know to have a higher quality or you know uh, product or to have a uh, you know association with companies that they believe in. And so with that coming in, and when also businesses are starting to be part of this ecosystem, to naturally give back to the soil of the world, you know, just like the farmers um, through the generations after generation always remember to give to the soil and nurture and cultivate the ground so that they can have year after year of sustainability and abundance. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. now like it's time that the businesses become really part of the sustainable ecosystem. And in order for that to happen, we really have to uh, more consciously find a way for us to meaningfully contribute to the soil of the world. And I believe that the B1G1 is one of those initiatives that actually like re-establishes the new ecosystem of how businesses can operate with hand in hand with people around the world to actually create the re real true abundance and sustainability. Mm. Nice. I agree with every single thing that you just said there, <laughs> Masami. I, I would love for you to share perhaps um, a specific project that you've you've had working alongside B1G1 for, mm. for a while now, because it's very easy for our listeners to think, OK, yeah, well, they want to make meaningful impacts and they want to do good and that they kind of get it. But yeah. I think it'd be really powerful if you could maybe share one one project that you've seen really, really grow and expand and feed into mm -hmm. that sustainability ecosystem in your in your time yeah. of b1g1 yeah so i can talk about many examples uh, but sure. i just want to highlight like a couple of things that is kind of oh wow impact is more than just what it is on its cover like so so for example it's easy to say let's plant a tree Right, like, and then it, we know that planting a tree is definitely good for the world and good for the environment. But what we don't realize is some hidden impacts of this one tree and what it can do. So, mm -hmm. as an example, you can choose to plant the trees in different parts of the world, or you can choose to plant lots of trees in B1J1 to. Um, um, spread your impact around the world to support the mini tree planting project too. But let's name one of those tree planting projects, which is to plant a mango tree in, let's say, in communities of Kenya. And what happened was years and years ago, there was um, uh, AIDS, HIV AIDS crisis and a lot of um, people uh, or children became orphaned. And in the giving space, what happened is when we look at the problem on its own, then we might go, okay, what's the problem with orphans? So let's build an orphanage. And then, so we can host the orphans inside the orphanage, right? So they can still eat food and be closed and go to school. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, when we look at a particular issue, when we start really 
be like closely um, work with people and listen to people, we started to see a different picture of the problem. So first of all, um, what is really the best for children who got orphaned? Then instead of institutionalizing those children, it's actually better for them to stay in the community and grow up in the community, even if they don't have a parent anymore. But the problem was that people in those communities were um, so poor, as in didn't have financial capacity to take in more children. So that's why there was nobody who could take care of them. But the thing is, if we could equip those families around the community to have a financial um, power, <laughs> and especially when they choose to take in children, we give them the additional support to give them, equip them with the financial capacity, then they, they are happy to take more kids. Right. And then they start to see the value of having children. But so these mango trees, we help plant. Um, when the mango tree grow up and it's a hybrid mango tree, so it's grow up faster and it's more like, uh, it's shorter, but um, bears more fruit. And then the fruits can be sold at the market at higher prices. And so when you plant the two trees, then um, in about four or five years time, this tree will produce enough fruit to cover the cost of education for one child, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and then as a result, <laughs> yeah, and then there are other things like, what about, you know, um, fish farming? What about beekeeping? And so actually, when we look at just one issue such as orphans crisis, um, we need to look at the prevention of HIV too, but we can also look at what it is really good for the long term of yeah. community and also the children. And there are lo lots of different answers that we can bring in. So in B1G1, we bring in different projects. And um, because there are hundreds of them, uh, it's not easy to find every story like behind every project. Yeah. But at the same time, what we want the people to really understand is that this power of like uh, enabling people and giving and enabling people has many dimensions. So it's yeah. great to be able to count the number of trees we plant, but we would love to, um, uh, you know, really inspire people about the side benefit and the side effects uh, and yeah. additional impacts that can be created through those impacts that people are enabling us to, mm. you know, achieve. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's such a powerful way of looking at it, isn't it? Because it's, it's very easy to think very narrowly about that. Yeah, like you said, planting a tree, but then the impacts and the repercussions are just far beyond, I think, what most people realise, including us. Mm -hmm. I think that's probably the first time I've actually heard a story like that around one of the projects mm -hmm. um, that we donate to. Um, so I personally, just being partnered with you guys, I would love to hear more of the, the yeah. extra <laughs> impacts that those like single impacts can have. Like that's mm -hmm. that's really, really powerful stuff. Um, and it and it it enhances the way that we think about the world, right? It's like we can, can immediately just open up our own minds and think, okay, how do we enable people rather than just to give, right? Because it, again, in a busy, fast-paced world where people are stressed mm -hmm. out, mm -hmm. it's too easy to think, okay, I'll just give over here. And it's almost like they can check that box. And then the mm -hmm. the actual, the depth of the, the, the empathy that they can feel and the, the gratitude for people like you and for those projects and to be inspired by those projects mm. that happen in communities can sometimes get a bit lost so um i think it's really really powerful thinking super powerful all right so masami is there anything else that you would like to add to this conversation that you think our listeners perhaps really need to hear about anything in relation to sustainability b1g1 any just wisdom that you personally have to share anything you want are uh, hmm, interesting <laughs> but mm -hmm. i think another thing like so so for example if every person was um able to make a positive impact through what they're doing and every business can you know make a difference through everything that they do of course it has the power to transform many challenges um in addition to that i think what's most game changing um in terms of really making a difference is to actually um, take, remove like judgment from mm. uh, our space because what happened is it's so easy to go what is the right way to give 
and what is the wrong way or what is this or uh, which business is the better business and which business mm -hmm. is a not good business or, uh, or even political stance or you know all kinds of things can lead to judgment in the world and it's easy to uh, spend time talking about what's wrong mm -hmm. <laughs> but I think what's more game changing is that to understand the value of diversity that us having different perspectives or different background or different belief or different personality or different kind of focus is actually valuable for the world in really forming this ecosystem together. So instead of like justifying and judging um, each other's point of view, if we actually found the way that we could make a positive difference, but then also appreciating different ways of doing things and also be always willing to listen to different perspectives, right? Rather than jumping mm -hmm. to a conclusion, then we would all learn so much more. And so in b one g one too, we want every business to be able to actually express themselves in the way they want to express themselves and they want to make a difference. So um, that's the most important for, part for us moving forward. You know, every business with right intention to want to do good, we want them to be part of this ecosystem. And we want all kinds of projects that qualify our criteria, <laughs> which is important too, yeah. but to be able to form a part of this ecosystem. So we can actually like transform the actual issues with more holistic and a long-term perspective, because mm -hmm. any challenge cannot be just solved with just one action, mm -hmm. right? Because they are like a chain of different circumstances and causes that actually like manifest in a form of a problem. Mm -hmm. So we actually need to really bring those solutions together to create the real sustainable long lasting change, mm -hmm. which means then mm -hmm. um, this diversity is a critical part of what we um, need to consciously bring in. Yeah, beautifully said, beautifully said. <laughs> Absolutely, I, I so agree that I think all businesses want to do good they want to give back but like you said earlier is they get kind of lost in kind of that societal norm of or thinking about money 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 so i think b1g1 is such a such a great job of helping businesses and people in general just to, to find that entry into into giving entry into into making impacts in the world and make it so easy for that to happen it, we we found it extremely easy to obviously to sign up with b1g1 and, and start to find those projects that that means that mean a lot to us and start giving and start integrating that with our business as well so i think b1g1 does that so well and it's i think it's it just makes it that much more convenient and easy for people to give and for them to take that step into kind of combining business with um with, with giving back to, in the world as well yeah and like you like you said it's it's creating that sustainability isn't it mm. and getting the people expressing themselves and connecting in their own ways like for us when we signed up with you it'll be almost a year yeah. i think now um it was very much around we wanted to make we wanted to make a difference and we were just passionate about so many things mm -hmm. so we just picked the the projects that we felt were 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 right for us but now this year we're focusing solely on um the health and well-being right global goal three mm -hmm. because that is really truly what's important to, to us when we look obviously at our business but also it's what's important to our our clients as well so when our clients come to work with us they actually get to pick where does their donation go to so they pick whichever global goal it is and then we kind of share with them some of the key projects that we also really love and then they get to pick and it just really just adds that extra bit of fire to it and then they get more curious about those projects and you know what are those hidden impacts that happen around those projects and some of them go on and do even more in their own ways perhaps maybe not always with b1g1 because they don't all have their own businesses but they you sp spark that within them and i think that ripple effect is huge absolutely huge so masami how can anybody that's listening get involved in your ecosystem even if perhaps they don't have a business of their own yet and if they do um, okay, so the one uh, best thing to do is to um, go and explore our website, b1g1.com. 
so people can visit our website and find out more. So that's one. Another thing uh, um, is if anybody wants to uh, connect with me <laughs> personally, then uh, you can find me on LinkedIn. And that's where I um, do most of the inside the posting. So people can follow me as well. Um, one more just additional thing. So if you are able to include the link, then interesting thing that the people listening here might want to do, especially those who are part of any businesses, is to actually go and then uh, try this thing called um, business for good to score. Um, so they can actually answer some questions about their business and what what kind of effort you are make, making or want to make or then um, at the end they will receive this personalized report and find out more about the, how to enhance the way you are incorporating the goodness in your business too so i guess like if you are happy to share those three absolutely, things, absolutely. Yeah, we'll uh, we would love to connect with yeah. anybody listening here uh, our community loves a scorecard they do, yeah, they do. <laughs> yeah, yes. we will definitely put all those links in the show notes as well so anyone listening go over Try to do that scorecard and then see where you see where you are on that and where you kind of where you fit in that giving giving space. Mm, yeah. So, Masami, thank you so much for joining us today. We do have an extra special bonus for our listeners. So what we're actually going to do on this podcast episode is we are going to be attaching the keynote that Paul did at last year's Become a Force for Good event as well. So anybody can mm. dive in a bit deeper. And that was on the topic of how everyone can be a change maker, no matter how big or small. So if you've really enjoyed this conversation, I've no doubt that you guys listening are going to really enjoy listening to that keynote as well. And not only that, obviously, we are hosting the Become a Force for Good event again this year. It will be on the 27th of October. Um, and Paul, Masimi's other half, um, and just like partner in your mission as well, as well as life, is going to be speaking again um, at the event. And we would love, obviously, for anybody listening that really, really wants to make an impact to show up for that event. Because just showing up for that event, not only are you going to learn how to live more consciously, live more authentically, and live more abundantly, you're also going to be making a difference because of the impacts and givings that are going to be happening along that event as well so please feel free to join us Masami thank you yeah thank you so much it's been really great speaking with you today and just getting the information about B1G1 and what you do out there to our audience and I can guarantee anyone listening is going to start to look you up and take your scorecard and delve into your ecosystem so thank you for joining us today thank you for having me there we go. Thank you so much for that. I hope because uh, I'm going to be doing something slightly different uh, today, but hopefully you can see my screen. I flipped away from spotlight and just to sharing my screen. So uh, could you just give me a thumbs up? Dimitri, I can see you. Can you, Dimitra, I beg your pardon. Can you give me a thumbs up if you can see my screen right now? You should see some little uh, animals on there. Exactly. Okay. So with that in mind, let me come live to you uh, all the way from Singapore. Uh, Charlotte and Jonathan, thank you so much for having me here. And I need to explain why uh, Masami is not uh, here. And uh, also, I just want to thank you for uh, Robert for that first session. I, I, I figured, you know, how cool is it to have a method named after you? Right? That's probably something to uh, to live for, right? The RS uh, method there. So uh, Masami, uh, two days ago, uh, had, uh, was actually uh, tested positive uh, to, in spite of vaccines and all those sorts of things, uh, tested positive to uh, to COVID. And so she is now in isolation, home isolation, and she wanted me to say hello to you. And she wanted me to let you know that she has two little friends who are guarding the door right there. You can see the little friends, hopefully. Uh, one is called Jumpy and one is simply called Bear. And they've been a very interesting part of our life during the uh, all the home uh, things that we've been involved in. Uh, so uh, during this particular time. So uh, uh, Charlotte, thank you so much for having me here. It's an absolute privilege, even though I didn't expect to, uh, to be here, an absolute privilege uh, to be with you. And I know I, there's a bit of lag uh, going on here. My apologies for that. I'll see if I can fix it as we go through. So one of the things uh, I, I want to make sure that happens today uh, is that we do something great. And, you know, it's great to see you up on the chat before. And so I want to kind of, uh, how should I say, amplify what's going on on the chat. And we have a really interesting way of doing that. So in the, and by the way, I know you're already doing this. So make sure you send your chat messages to panelists and attendees as opposed to simply panelists. And you will see on your screen three particular B1G1 projects 
and I'll explain why they're there in a minute. You'll see about this one, which is uh, an education project, hence the reason for E uh, right above it. Uh, that's uh, a project for kids in need, which is absolutely life changing. And as a result of you putting a message on the chat, any message for that matter, and then putting a space and then an E, guess what's going to happen? 11 kids are going to get access to game-changing and life-changing education. Some of us may be concerned who isn't about what's going on uh, with our climate. And so if you do the same thing, that is you just simply put a T on the end of your chat message, ideally with a the space, then guess what? We are going to plant a tree just because you did that. Don't put it up in the chat. Oh, someone already has. <laughs> that looks like you, which is really good. Uh, so pop a T on the end. And if uh, you feel something about the 770 million people who currently don't have access to pure clean water, uh, then you might want to put a W in there, and what's going to happen is we're going to have to give a bunch of water to a whole lot of people in need as well. Uh, so thank you, thank you <laughs> for the comments. So, and by the way, you can't say ETW, right? You've got to say an E or a T or a W, and you can change it up each time. So let's give you a practice. Here's the practice, right? Oh, by the way, you're okay to keep going. Well done, Ch Chanda. So simply add the letter of your choice at the end of each one of your chat messages. So you can sort of change it up any time you want. Uh, let me just get rid of that phone call right there. There we go. Uh, and uh, all, all we need you to do, I'm sorry, all we need you to do, let's go back through that again, is in the chat message right now, just pop the town that you're in. Go ahead, the town that you're in, and uh, then just uh, an E, a T, or a W. That'll be fine. So let us know where you are. Abu Dhabi uh, says, good year, good to have you here. Uh, Demetra, I know I'm a spoil sport. Liverpool, well done. <laughs> and we're going to count all these things up uh, later on. Those little animals we saw actually counting all of them. Oh, from Swansea. Good, good, good. And some people, I know that Robert mentioned this, some people from Dubai, uh, great to uh, great to have you here as well. Wherever you are from Munich as well. Uh, very, very good. We opened up a uh, uh, vaccinated travel lane to Germany uh, about three weeks ago here in Singapore, so we can now uh, fly there. So um, one of the things that Robert was talking about, indeed Jonathan and, and Charlotte were mentioning it, is this whole issue of story. Because when you were watching the B1G1 video just a moment ago, what you were seeing was a story. And it was a story that Masami didn't just tell, it was a story that Masami created. And it was in a mentoring session one day, and she said to me, what do you think? Uh, you know, I've been having these ideas in my head. And she said, I just want you to imagine a world where every time business was done, something great happened. Uh, you know, how would you feel about that? And I said, wow, can I be your mentor for the rest of your life? And so from these simple little stories can all sorts of really interesting things can happen. And of course, every single one of us has a story. But, you know, looking back at what Robert was saying, I love what you said, Robert, about we weren't necessarily born that way. We all have a his story. We have a present story, of course, and we have a future story. And the way I've thought about our time together today, Jonathan and Charlotte, is that this is, in a sense, a co-creation of a future story, which, by the way, can start just like that, right, in a nanosecond. And one of the things that you would realize is that every story has characters, every story has heroes, every story has guides, every story has monsters, all of that sort of thing. So let me just tell you what your role is in all of this. You actually are the hero, okay? <laughs> and what's happening today is that everyone else in the wellness theory community is actually your guide. Put a Y in the chat, followed by an E, a T, or a W, if you're up for that. Go ahead, just pop it in there, because we need to get some things happening here. A y, or a yes would do as well, just to sort of separate from an E, a T, or a W, if you feel okay about what we've just said. Very, very good. Okay, okay. So with that in mind, and there's a reason why I'm talking or mentioning stories today, because I think we all need a new story. Not to tell a new story, but we need a new story. And the reason is because, as you can see on the screen, the world has profoundly, profoundly changed. And a lot of people I know would say it's changed forever. And so if the story we have has not changed, it, it may be 
a little bit challenging, bearing in mind, of course, what Robert was saying about behaviors, mindsets, and stuff. And interestingly enough, those of us who have businesses, we know this to be true. By the way, the, the most, most important change that has happened, well, there are three that I just want to talk about very briefly. There's a change from me to we. It's no longer about you. It's about we. That's the big change that, that the pandemic has accelerated. It's also a change from value to values. Very, very important to get that. What you stand for is actually more important than ever. Um, and of course, it's a change from profit focus to purpose focus. And we'll talk a little bit about that as we go through. So, and talking of that, because of that change, then the way that we create value, the way that we articulate it and get paid for it has to change dramatically. And talking of dramatically, I had a huge change in, in my life about 18 weeks ago when someone uh, I respect sent me an email and in the middle of the email, it said, Paul, you might appreciate this quote. And it was a quote from the guy you see on your screen, Mr. Jobs. Let me share the quote with you. It's in two parts. The first one says, as I hope you can see, the storyteller is the most powerful person in the world. Now, you can largely ignore that because it's not really the, the crucial piece. The crucial piece is this. The storyteller sets the vision, the values, and the agenda for an entire generation yet to come. The thing that really hit me about that is the, the last few words. Again, the storyteller sets the vision, the values, and the agenda for an entire generation yet to come. So when you or me are working with the clients or customers that we are privileged to serve and changing up our story so that it changes theirs, guess what? It changes theirs in the sense that when their children come and sit on their knee and say, once upon a time, then it's changing their stories as well. Kind of like this sort of ripple effect, another way of thinking about that. And why is that so important right now? Well. There's all sorts of things that we could say. I would say it's a must. And I just want to go through a couple of things which illustrate that. And, and here's a question that a friend of ours, Paul Pullman, uh, posed uh, a couple of weeks ago in, in Geneva. Uh, and it's also in his new book, which is called Net Positive, which is highly recommended as well. And, and here's the question he posed, said, is the world better off because you and your business is in it. Now, I suspect that because you're part of this wonderful community here, your answer to that is, of course, and I hope, I'm pretty sure it would be. So let me add a supplementary question on that. And, and by the way, that's a really interesting question because it, it's, it's so interesting. When I look at businesses, I see two different types of businesses. I see standard businesses quote unquote standard, and I see stand out businesses. And I was trying to figure out what it is that makes those businesses stand out. What is it that makes them differentiate themselves from the standard and see if this alliteration makes sense to you. I think it's this, the standard, that you, what happens is you, you move from standard to stand out because you stand for something that's bigger than yourself. Standard to stand out because you stand for something that's bigger. And as you ponder that question, of course, there's another way of, or uh, another little sub question you can ask is that is, is it possible to amplify that impact? And by the way, the crucial thing in the word impact is ACT. That is not just to talk about it, it is actually to do it and take action on these things. Here are some people that have something to say about that. This first lady, as you can see, and I'm just trying to make sure that I can see everything is on there, which I can't, but anyway, you can read it. We need to create a future where governments and civil society come together to, blah, blah. but the most important thing about her, her story in Forbes, she's a featured writer, writer in Forbes, is that she says the future's here, it's now, all the history. I want you to ponder that. And then she goes on to say this, 
The great companies leverage their skills again for the greater good. It's something, it's not about you, it's about we now. And then they create this much bigger purpose that is talking about the tangible and is visible to the customers they seek to serve. And I'll show you some fabulous examples of that in just a moment, one of which happens to be the wellness theory uh, website as well. So we'll get into that in just a minute. So there's the why. The question is how? Well, there's probably a lot of hows, but I would like to suggest rather obviously that B1G1 is a very powerful how to make it happen. And by the way, the most crucial thing, if you go back to what Robert was talking about, he was talking about rituals and he was talking about habits, and those two things are really profoundly important in B1G1. And I remember he was talking about what, what happens when you get out of bed in the morning. That's a really crucial question. And by applying rituals and habits, you can change up so much. And what B1G1 lets you do is create what we call giving stories that lift your impact, your engagement, and your connection to a whole new level. For example, and there's all sorts of great things that are already happening because of what you've put on the chat. Uh, by the way, just put something on the chat so uh, this is making sense or something if this is making sense to you and make sure you put an E, a T or a W on the end of it. Let's have a uh, get some more stuff happening. And of course, there's also lots of stuff happening. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you, Ewan. Um, and of course, because you had the ticket for good uh, right here, uh, courtesy of Charlotte and Jonathan as well. Thank you, Chantal. Uh, very, very lovely. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, to um, um, and what, and, and as you listened to that video right up front, uh, then what you're now able to do is to say every time you do business with us, meaning you, you're able to say every time you do business with me, as it were you make sure that something great happens in our world. And that something great is, is really, really interesting because you can match your, give, your giving. And by the way, here's a little uh, sentence for you that I think really underpins all of this. All of us are at our best when we're giving. And I don't necessarily mean giving money, but I mean giving of ourselves. It's not about us, it's about something bigger than us. And so what we can do is match, or you can do is match your impacts to your client's interests. For example, if let's say you were dealing with someone in hospitality, you might make certain that the giving that you were doing had something to do with providing shelter or, or whatever. And we'll show you how that all works in, in just a moment or two. And by the way, the really good news is that you don't just do it like so often we do, we say, oh, we're giving money to something, and no idea what happens. Well, in B1G1, as you'll see by looking at the Wellness Theory website and some others, that we measure, we measure the impact and we do that in real time, in real time. So when we're saying, for example, as, as we set up here, you know, but you put a W on there, some people are getting water, that's not happening absolutely in real time today, but in 15 days, it certainly is. Okay? And we track exactly where that goes uh, and so on. So you get that in real time and you can share them, as you'll see, dynamically on your site. And the good news is, you know, we talk about business for good. That phrase was first used in September 2015 when some global leaders got together and tried to figure out how are we going to do this? And they created, as you know, the global goals, 17 goals with 169 sub targets, which, as the lady said before, we have to meet by 2030. Otherwise, we're history. And so everything in B1G1 is tracked against these global goals, again, as you will see. So let me show you some things that you might want to do. You might want to say, oh, by the way, uh, Nancy, see why you said thank you, very inspiring, which is very lovely of you to say that. You could have put an E, a T, or a W on the end of that. You might want to do that now. And some great things. Jordan, so similarly, when you said love it, put an E, a T, or a W on the end of these things so that we can make some additional uh, giving happen. And by the way, that's my gift as a way of saying thank you for you being here. So you could say, there you go. <laughs> Every time we send an email, you could say a child gets access to an e-learning program that changes their life. Just think about that. And think about that on the basis that I happen to know this. If you go to internetstats.com, you'll find it that 2.7 million, million emails are sent per second, per second. So 
just imagine, you know, sometimes it seems so difficult to make change happen, but see with just by these little tiny things, we can do amazing, amazing things. Or, you know, you might be working on LinkedIn, for example. So you could say when someone connects with you on LinkedIn, you help, a, and these things on the blue side here are your choice, right? When we do a Zoom meeting, in fact, this is what happens to me and to many B1G1 members around the world. Whenever we do a Zoom meeting, 18 homeless people get a nutritious meal just because we're doing a Zoom meeting and it all happens automatically. Or, you know, whenever you receive an order, whatever that is, I don't know someone telling you something, but I mean, an order on your website, 11 forest trees get planted. And these are all up to you. And what you're seeing here is this really magical history making idea that you can go when this, then this. So let me just show you what, what that all means. So if you imagine when you're a B1G1 business for good, then the when this is really a trigger. And this trigger, as you'll see in a moment, can be anything that you want, as you will see. And then you've got these 500 plus high impact vetted projects, vetted so you know they do what they say. It's very tough for projects to be a part of B1G1, by the way. Uh, then you can give, look at that, from just one cent. So for the first time almost, you, you don't have to say, these silly things that people say, which is like, oh, our wait time successful, because we don't understand that giving of ourselves is part of the journey. And we can do this really easily. And fully, how about that? 100% of your giving goes. We even make up the, the credit card charges because of the loving model uh, that B1G1 has. And as you can see, we track every giving for you, and I'll show you that in just a second, and everything is on track with the SDGs. Now, I don't want to get too much into the how, because the, the, the why is really important, and the how is beautiful and simple, by the way. So have a look at the left-hand side of your screen right now, and you'll see what we mean by triggers. It can be anything. When someone visits your website, when someone has a coaching call with you, when someone pays on time and you have to say you're sorry, when you reach a, reach a milestone, others at Zoom meetings, when you go the extra mile, when someone helps you, when, how about this one, when your 10-year-old son, assuming you've got one, cleans their room. Kids love this stuff. And once, because they get it, there's no, what Robert referred to as baggage, there's none of that, kids just get it. You mean by me cleaning the room, something great happened in the world? Yes, and you are in total control and it's really, really easy uh, to make it happen. And by the way, when it happens, remember I said you could make it sort of uh, relevant to your, your customer. So here's, for example, someone, I just pulled this one out because earlier today I didn't know I was doing this. So I just pulled this one out. Uh, this is someone actually in New York. They happen to be an accountant. And uh, the, this is what we call a gratitude certificate. So they, and this is, happens automatically. So, uh, which again, we, we work with you on. So imagine you were dealing with this customer and some giving happened, and then you might want to send them this gratitude certificate. So in this particular case, let me just blow that up. If you were a client of this particular accountant, then, or in this particular case, it doesn't talk about an accountant. This one is a promotional product company. Uh, we just shipped your goodies. Uh, we've celebrated them by rescuing 18 meals. And then the really beautiful thing down the bottom is this recognition that we cannot do this alone. So it says our simple goal here is to keep on making things great or great things happen in our world together. And, and just for a minute, how would you feel if, just pop in the chat, how would you, together with an EOT or an OU, how you would feel if you could be making this happen uh, in, in your business? Uh, give, me, give me an example of that. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly, Charlotte. Get those ETs and W coming. Now, what I'm going to do is just to show you how this is in real life. I'm just going to stop my, my, my share for a moment and change it up slightly differently. And this is where, oh, you know, you should never do things live and all that kind of stuff on the web, but why not? Why not? Let's have some fun. So let's actually do this live. You um, And I'm not sure whether you can see that yet. Uh, in fact, you can't. I know that you can't, but now you will be able to see it. You'll see some people that you know on my screen. Okay, So here they go. So this is Jonathan and Charlotte right there. 
And what's really interesting is if you read that, that's kind of like our vision, you read the whole thing about their story, their story, and how it can be a force for good in the world. And then as you, there you go, look, right there, our story, our story, okay? And their story is helping you and I change ours, which is really the crucial bit. You know, Mr. Jobs wasn't just a great storyteller, he was a story creator. And all of us have the opportunity to do that. And then, you know, let's introduce ourselves, some lovely stuff here, and, you know, really, really lovely stuff. And then down the bottom, are their values. Remember, we talked about values being more important than value. And then have a look down here. Here's the impact that they're having on the global goals right there. And there's a little widget, which is just simply pasted uh, from the B1G1 site. And you can do that in all sorts of interesting ways. So for example, uh, I was hoping that there would be some people in England. So if I flip across here to, uh, to um, and I, I gather it's getting cold uh, up there. So here's uh, a company called Uheat. They do underfloor hearing. Uh, Demetra, you happen to be in the center of my screen, which is great. So you can give me a thumbs up if you can see a company called UV. Oh, you can. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. So here you go, right? We are a business for good. You can see they've got a goal, which we, we help them track. And here you can see their giving stories that they've created when you buy and, you know, whatever it is. And what's really cool is when you put those giving stories, and it's so simple to do, it's just a ching -ching -ching, just a little click. And you can here if you were visiting their website, you can just mouse over. This is their website. It's not, you know, and, and you can see exactly your customers, your prospects, and so on can see exactly what's happening. And then if I can just show you one more, which is kind of interesting, because this started to set uh, an interesting precedent. This is a guy I was speaking to earlier today. And everybody in B1G1 has this, or most people have this little thing called impact on their sites. So let's have a look at this because I think this is really interesting. Um, and, and, and I know that Charlotte and Jonathan haven't seen this one yet. So, so it's kind of interesting way of thinking about it. So here on the impact page, what if every time we do business, something good happens in the world? And look at what's happened here. Look at this, this is really interesting. He says, our mission is to do this and this and this, but here's the crucial piece, crucial piece, so that, so that we can, so that we can do what? Well, let's have a look. There it is on the left-hand side, save the thousand kids from sex trafficking, give a whole bunch of water and feed a lot of people as well. But Brody believes in BHAGs. So, so why would we want to do that? Because what we do says who we are. Isn't that the truth? And then you come down, you look at their total impacts, and you can see them being counted up there and so on and so forth. Got it, Demetra, thank you. Uh, and then you see the map right there, and we can scroll over the map uh, if I, there we go. And we can actually see how that's reported because you have to sort of lean in to do that. But you can see there's got nothing to do with the money that you're giving. It has everything to do with the impact that you are creating. So hopefully that makes sense. And what I'm going to do is just flip back uh, to, well, excuse me, D Dimitri, can you see a PowerPoint slide up there now? You, you, or sorry, a keynote slide. Anyway, you can. Okay. So what I'd love you to do is, thank you, you and I'm glad that it's so, glad it's so inspiring with the tea. Um, tell me this, tell me if this looks exciting for you, just like exciting, or I'd love to be a part of it, or whatever it is, just pop that there so that we can have an exciting five minutes uh, just before we end our time together. <laughs> 100% says you, okay, love to be a part of this, okay, 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 and oh, so, so good. Well, today is not necessarily where you're going to decide to do that, but some of you can, because what I did, I created something special for you uh, as, as a result of all of this. So remember, we talked about history and story and co-creating your future story. Well, that's what B1G1 is helping you do. I now see B1G1 is helping you change up the story because giving of yourself now becomes a part of who you are. And when that happens behaviorally, it changes everything for us. And so that's why I talk about this as a co-creation. So we can, if you would love to start co-creating your future story now, let me give you a couple of ideas. You can just simply click on that, or sorry, take a photograph of that, and that will take you 
to how you join us on B1G1. You'll see it depends upon the size of your business. But you see the little link underneath that. Uh, Charlotte, if someone or Demetra could just pop that one in there, the one that says bit.ly wellness theory, B1G1 uh, wellness theory. If someone could just do, I should have uh, done, uh, there you go. Uh, uh, Demetra, you're going to do it. Thank you so much. And the reason I want to put that there is because many of you might want to spend more time going a little deeper, really getting into the guts, if you will, to put it crudely, of B1G1. And if you would love to do that, then thank you. And then all you need to do, thank you, uh, whoever did that, just click on that. And what will happen, I think it's next Wednesday at the same time, uh, I'll be able to take even more time with you so that we can uh, jump uh, into this uh, history making thing and so that you can be a part of these 3000 businesses who are now a force for good final little point from me is this when if we go back to the story of masami um, it was like just a simple idea way back in 2007 and we had no idea how to do it it just felt really good and what i what is a final thought for you what i want to let you know is that these tiny seemingly tiny little shifts that you make have massive impact not just on you and the people that you're privileged to serve but also on our world and who could have thought that all those years ago i would be sitting here on zoom with you and able to show you that all of the people that together are in B1G1 and Jonathan and, and, and Charlotte and so on would have created more than a quarter of a billion impacts on our world. So Charlotte and Jonathan, thank you so much for having me here. I